Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.0.3 has been out for over a week with more and more issues and iOS 17.1 beta three has been out for a few days. There's even more features to talk about with iOS 17.1. We'll also talk about the experience as I've been using it on my 15 pro max. I recently just completely restored the phone to see if it would fix my battery issues. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll also talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's 20. 29,000 votes and 219 comments. I've read all of the comments to see what the overall experience is like on both 17.0.3 and iOS 17.1 beta three. The first thing though, is there's a couple things that Apple updated. They actually recently released an Apple support document. If you want to buy a pre-owned iPhone and I'll link this in the description, but you'll see it's a new support document saying why buy a pre-owned iPhone. If you're buying online, what to look for, if you're buying in person, what you need to inspect, check for damage, turn on the iPhone. If you see the lock screen, make sure you can unlock it and much more. So it's a helpful little guide to make sure that you're not getting something that's activation locked or anything else. So it's great that they have that. Apple also released a video called study with me on YouTube featuring storm Reed. And this is someone that's just studying and then it gives you advice on when to take a break. So if you just want something to run in the background, they've made this available. It's about an hour and a half or an hour and 32 minutes, as you can see here. Now, if you're going to apple.com or iCloud.com, when you go to sign in, there's a new option. You can see here, it actually says continue with password or sign in with passkey. If you have iOS 17 or Mac OS Sonoma, it will now automatically create a passkey for you. So you no longer have to put in your password. So that's great. I think passkeys are a great thing. I've been using on a lot of different websites and highly recommend them. So to have that as a default option now is a great move in the right direction. Apple maps is rolling out the latest updated experience in two new countries, Greece and Denmark. So when you zoom into a major city, just keep zooming in, you'll see an updated experience, sometimes with a look around with updated buildings and much more. It's not showing for me yet, but let me know if it's showing for you in the comments below. It's great when it shows this with all of the different buildings scaled and everything else. So it's great to have that. And also let me know if you use Apple maps in Denmark or maybe other countries as well. It actually works pretty well in the United States now. Now, as far as new features in iOS 17.1 beta three, well, I mentioned a couple where Apple's updated the action button. So it doesn't activate automatically really quickly. If it's in your pocket, it will sense that they've also updated the notification sounds. Many people have had complaints about them being a little bit quiet. And if we go into sound and haptics, and then we go to our text tones, if we scroll down and then tap on one of the new ones, they seem to be louder. Some of them are a bit quiet still, but it's something that seems to be improved, but I think it could use a little more improvement and an option to really adjust those to your liking. But I've definitely noticed a difference. Also discover card is actually now showing the balance in Apple wallet on iOS 17.1 beta three. We saw this roll out in the UK. Now it's rolling out here. And I took a screenshot with the setup. And you'll see it says connect your account to wallet, get a more comprehensive view of your finances by connecting your debit and credit accounts to wallet. So if we go to the next photo, you'll see here, it says wallet will have access to the following contact details, account details, account balances and transactions and payment details. You don't have to allow this. You can still use it like you've been using it, but if you want to see the balance and everything that's been purchased right from one place, you can do that. Now I've turned this on and it's really nice just to see it just like you would with an Apple card within podcasts. There's an update as well. So if we go into one we've already downloaded and we want to get rid of that, we have a remove download button for the slider now. So we can remove that very simply. We'll go in and again, it's here. This has been updated. Hopefully they update this in music as well. Now I recently completely erased my phone and had to set up my Apple watch again, because I set up everything manually. When I did that, I noticed that watch OS 10.1, since it has the double tap feature on the series nine and Apple watch ultra two, there's actually a new animation for that in this update. So you can see it here. I screen recorded it and it shows double tap and how it works. So it says tap your index finger and thumb together twice to answer a call, reply to a message, see your smart stack and more. And many have asked me what this is available for. It's only for the series nine and Apple watch ultra two. Apple says it's due to the chipset. 
We could do it in accessibility before, maybe it's a little faster, but either way, it's only available on those devices. And it will be out with the beta toward the end of the month. With iOS 17.0.3 and iOS 17.1 beta 3 this year, there seems to be some major issues. And while it's somewhat expected on a beta, with a public release, some of these issues I definitely would not expect. For example, people's phones are randomly rebooting at night, whether they're on the charger or not. People will actually see gaps in their battery graph. I haven't experienced this myself, but if it's charging, basically you'll go into your battery graph and there will be a gap there where it's charging, but it's just completely not in use or not being used. So you'll see this sort of area blank as it's rebooting. I've seen this from multiple people online and I haven't experienced it thankfully, but that's causing issues of course, because once it reboots, it requires your password. So it's completely crashing. Also, because of that, alarms are not going off, or sometimes alarms are just not going off in general. In fact, my daughter is on iOS 17.0.3 on an iPhone 14 Plus. It completely rebooted and didn't wake her up. So she had a timer set or an alarm set. It didn't go off. My wife actually noticed she wasn't up in time and had to wake her up. And she noticed that it never went off when she checked her phone, despite it actually having an alarm set. So that's a problem I'm hearing more and more. I've had that myself. I've seen others have that and Apple needs to fix that pretty quickly. Also, people are having notifications not coming in again, which is a major issue. Sometimes with iMessage, sometimes with YouTube, sometimes with all sorts of apps. It's just not actually showing the notification when you need it to, even though you're not in do not disturb, or maybe you don't even have a focus mode enabled and everything's not even on silent. So there's definitely some issues there as well as Wi-Fi issues with it disconnecting or not processing data. This time around, iOS 17 seems to be much worse than what we expected. We thought it would bring a lot of stability and Apple is persisting making new versions very quickly to fix these issues, but there's definitely some problems here that I didn't think we expected. Also, some people are saying they have burn in on the iPhone 15 displays. Now I'm a bit skeptical of this. It could be a few having the issue for sure, but having this be widespread seems unlikely as burn in takes some time usually. However, if people are experiencing it, those that have experienced it have actually had their displays replaced by Apple or their phone replaced from what I've heard. So that definitely should not be happening. And that could just be a bad display situation where they need to have it replaced. So some odd things going on this year with Apple, I think focus on stability would be the next big move for them. Now, as far as October, we do expect some new iPads possibly, but not necessarily an Apple event. We're expecting an iPad mini replacement possibly, as well as iPad air updates, maybe even a standard iPad as well. So I would expect those to come in an announcement if we do get them. And some people have said we could get an announcement for new Macs as well as the iMac hasn't been updated. So we could get a few refreshes there, but as far as the Mac goes, it may not be until next year that we see any updates there. As far as any future updates, well, iOS 17.0.4 seems very likely to me, although I don't think we're seeing it in testing. Apple could wait until until iOS 17.1. But with people's phones rebooting and alarms not working, I think they should patch that as soon as possible. That's a major problem for a lot of people. So hopefully they patch that this coming week. I also expect iOS 17.4 probably on the week of the 22nd. We saw a recent article in France that actually says we'll have iOS 17.1 by the 24th. That's based off of the RF radiation fix that they have for the iPhone 12 series phones. That's something I talked about in a previous update. That's something they're going to patch and have to legally over there to continue selling that phone. So we'll see that before the 24th. I often thought it would be on the 23rd as Apple typically likes to release public releases on Monday with 0.1 updates. So we probably will have an iOS 17.1 RC this coming week on Tuesday or so with the final release, probably the following Monday or Tuesday. However, I still think Apple should patch the issues with the phones rebooting and the alarms sooner than that. But let me know if you're experiencing those in the comments below. Now, as far as any other improvements, I've seen no differences in the cameras, whether that be on older phones, newer phones, anything else, they seem to be the same now. I think they're going to stay what they are. I do think Apple improved them a bit on the 14 series devices. They seem to be pretty good. As you can see here, I don't really see much of a difference other than better low light with the new sensors and the new phones. I think Apple's fixed that a little bit, but I don't expect any future updates as well. Also, those of you having issues with your display upgrading, again, I've found that most people that have that issue, that tends to be an issue with the display itself, not necessarily the software update. If you are having that issue, make sure you bring it into Apple so they can check it out for you. 
Now, as far as connectivity, I've had no issues with that on my 15 Pro Max anyway. Seems to be pretty good. I have heard a couple people with issues, but in general, it seems to have good cellular connectivity. I don't really have any drops with that, and I personally don't have the Wi-Fi issue as well. There are more bugs to talk about, though, in iOS 17.1 Beta 3. In particular, if you're using pass keys, they don't work at all with Google. So if you're on 17.1 Beta 3, I tested it with this phone. I tested it with another phone on 17.1 Beta 3 and then tested it on 17.0.3 and it worked. So it seems to be an issue, not only that does it not connect and actually verify you, it also doesn't allow you to create them for Google. I don't know if it's any other websites though as well. Also, I've had some touch issues where it just doesn't respond sometimes in Safari. And the same is true on the iPad. I actually have more touch issues on the iPad than anything else. While I'm in Safari, sometimes it just doesn't work. I'll be in YouTube, touch the screen, try and move the slider, nothing happens. I'll have to try it a few times, then it responds. So there's definitely some odd touch bugs here this time around. Also, I tried something this week where I tried to downgrade this 15 Pro Max to iOS 17.0.3 and I couldn't do it. I tried a restore method, I put it in recovery mode, I put it in DFU mode, I tried multiple apps, it won't let you do it, there was no way to do it on the 15 series devices. You can do it on other devices, but it seems it doesn't work on the 15 models. Maybe they'll fix it in a future update or maybe it's on purpose and they don't want you doing it. Either way, it gives you an error over and over. I tried multiple cables, I probably tried it 20 different times, 20 different ways. Then I finally had to boot it out of recovery mode and then just wipe it and start over. And as far as anything else, well, people have had stutters with scrolling, lag when typing. So if you're in notes, notes in particular seem to be somewhat buggy for some people with the keyboard being slow. And it's fine for me, but some people are just seeing touch bugs, lag, stutters all over the place and some odd issues with even airdrop not working for some. So if we go in here, let's try and airdrop this, we'll airdrop it to the iPad. It sends instantly and it's already there. So that's working flawlessly for me, but some people are reporting airdrop doesn't work. You do have to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on though, typically for it to work properly and be on the same Apple ID, or you'll see it nearby as a different ID. Also, watchOS 10.1 is having issues with the weather on the watch face, just not showing the data. Mine's actually working okay for the temperature, but sometimes it just doesn't work properly. And I had to reset everything recently, so there we go. It seems to work okay for me, but some people are just experiencing problems. However, I did recognize that resetting this phone made a huge difference. I started completely from scratch and did not restore from a backup. So far, it's made a difference. I'll show you that in the battery in just a moment. As far as iPhone 15 Pro Max overheating, iOS 17.0.3 seemed to definitely fix that. Instagram and Meta apps have been updated, fixing that for the most part. But if you want to save the most battery, get rid of Meta apps. It seems to help dramatically. If we go into feedback, I did want to share one thing with the release notes, and you can see Apple released tvOS 17.1 Beta 3 and also HomePod OS 17.1 Beta 3. It just came a day after iOS 17.1 Beta 3. But if we go into the release notes, if you didn't see the What's New video, you'll see that they actually resolved a few issues with specifically power consumption on the Apple Watch. So if you're running an Apple Watch running 10.1 and it's paired with iOS 17, the base version that was causing an issue, or if you're running watchOS 10.0 and it's paired with watchOS 17.1, it could use additional power. So they fixed that. So make sure you update to this version if you haven't already, if you're having those issues. Now, as far as performance and overall heat. Well, performance is great. No issues here. Other than those stutters that some people are mentioning, I haven't experienced them, although I reset everything and this has been incredibly smooth. The experience is much better for me based on that. So it made such a huge difference. I'll probably do that every couple of versions if I need to, or maybe every year it's a bit of a pain, but it made such a big difference. The same is true with heat. The phone is barely warm, just using it regularly. It was warm initially. Of course, when you restore everything, it's going to be like that but in general, it's nice and cool. Let's take a look with the thermal camera and we'll bring in the iPhone 11 just to check that as well. Since it really hasn't been doing anything this whole time, you'll see the 15 pro max is at about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. The iPhone 11 is at about 89 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, not doing anything. So using this a little bit to demonstrate things in video, it definitely is a little bit warmer. It went up to 91 or so, but not really much of an issue. That's actually my hand temperature for the most part anyway. So it's not really an issue whatsoever that probably heated it up a little bit. Typically when I pick this up though, it's cool to the touch, which is definitely a departure from what we had before 17.0.3.
Now, as far as battery life, well, like I said, I completely wiped this phone. I started over just to see what it would be like. It's been a huge improvement so far. It's only been about a half a day, but if we go to battery, battery health and charging, you'll see I'm at hundred percent of course. And then if we go to settings, we'll take a look at the cycle count here general and then about you'll see we're at 13 cycles so a little bit more than i would expect since i didn't use this a ton when i was reviewing it and everything i used it for a week and that was about it but now battery life seems to be much better so you'll see here this is today two hours and 38 minutes of screen active time that's what i was getting for almost an entire day before three hours and 50 minutes of idle time and i'm at about well 70%. So it's used 31% of my battery or so the day before, again, I barely used it, but it's less than 25% usage at an hour and a half. So it seems to be pretty good. Again, Safari is showing it's using a lot of power for some reason I've used it for two minutes, so it really shouldn't be using much. I completely wiped the phone. I did not restore anything. It is syncing things from iCloud such as messages and more, but in general, I'm pretty impressed and it's only been a half a day or so. So it should increase after about a week of processing in the background, indexing, processing photos over again, should really make it a bit better. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 beta three, if you're already on the betas, I definitely would. If you're not on the betas yet, I would hold off. I would wait and stay on the public version. I would probably install 17.0.3 as iOS 17.0.2 had those issues with the iPhone 15 and the ones before that with 17 or iOS 17.0.3, it fixes most issues, but there's still some that keep popping up. So if you haven't updated yet and you're not having any issues, I'd hold off until the next public release, basically. Now, as far as what you had to say on the overall experience, let's take a look. Michael D'Souza 4911 says, hi, I'm currently running 17.0.3 and having issues with sound notifications for iMessage and text. WhatsApp and email. The issue is I just don't get any sound notifications from these three services. Genius Bar were lost on how to help, but we did a settings reset, a full rack factory reset, but still the issue remains. Apple telephone support say there might be a known issue. I wonder if anyone else is having the issue. And as I mentioned, quite a few people are reporting this. Here's a different experience with crash GSXR 750. Honestly, 17.0.3 has been a gem. I'm getting tremendous battery life on my two year old 13 pro max, easily 10 plus hours of screen on time without recharging during the day. Jonathan Mox 2530 says 17.1 beta three on my iPhone 13 has been great. 17.0.3 was absolutely awful for my performance and battery life, despite aiding in the overheating problems. iOS 17.1 beta three has improved my battery life and performance and made my phone feel much more stable. Hopefully it continues to get better from here. At Sheesh says currently on iOS 17.1 beta three on my iPhone 13 mini had numerous issues with iOS 17.0.3 specific on performance and battery life. 17.1 beta three seems to do better. I still experience keyboard lags here and there, and the camera app still crashes sometimes when taking a portrait photo, but the overall smoothness of the device is better than when it was back with 17.0.3. Devin 8210 says iOS 17.1 beta three works great on my iPhone 11 pro max and on my M1 12.9 iPad pro. It is a noticeable improvement over beta two. Back then I had often apps crashing and even complete restarts of my devices. So that's everything with iOS 17.0.3 and iOS 17.1 beta three. Hopefully we get iOS 17.0.4 this week, very soon to fix some issues and iOS 17.1 release candidate. Hopefully will be this coming week as well. Let me know if you've found any other features and your experience in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.